Good morning and welcome to our service for Palm Sunday. Today I'd like to thank Hannah for recording the readings and collects and the Rob for doing our prayers and of course Jack for putting everything together for us. If you've received a palm cross then you might like to just pause the video for a moment and bring it because we're going to pray a blessing for the palm crosses. A prayer for blessing the palm crosses. God our Saviour, whose Son Jesus Christ entered Jerusalem as Messiah to suffer and to die, let these palms be for us signs of his victory and grant that we who bear them in his name may ever hail him as our King and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. Now we listen to our first hymn, well-known Palm Sunday hymn, Ride On, Ride On in Majesty. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Welcome to this service of the Word in Lent, a season when we prepare in heart and mind to travel with Jesus to the cross and consider afresh the hope and joy of his resurrection. By carefully keeping these days, Christians take to heart the call to repentance and the assurance of forgiveness proclaimed in the Gospel, and so grow in faith and devotion to our Lord. The sacrifice of God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart God will not despise. Let us take time in stillness to examine our hearts and minds and lay our burdens before the cross.
wash away all my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Against you, you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God, who sent his Son into the world to save sinners, bring you his pardon and peace, now and forever. Amen. Amen. True and humble King, hailed by the crowd as Messiah, grant us faith to know you and love you, that we may be found beside you on the way of the cross, which is the path of the Lord. Amen. Open for me the gates of the righteous. I will enter and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord, through which the righteous may enter. I will give you thanks, for you answered me. You have become my salvation. The stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. The Lord has done this, and it is marvellous in our eyes. The Lord has done it this very day. Let us rejoice today and be glad. Lord, save us. Lord, grant us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. From the house of the Lord we bless you. The Lord is God, and he has made his light shine on us. With bows in hand, join in the festal procession up to the horns of the altar. You are my Lord, and I will praise you. You are my Lord, and I will exalt you. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and just as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you doing this? Say, the Lord needs it and will send it back here shortly. They went and found a colt outside in the street, tied at a doorway. As they untied it, some people standing there asked, what, what are you doing untying that colt? They answered as Jesus had told them to, and the people let them go. When they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks over it, he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, while others spread branches they had cut in the fields. Those who went ahead and those who followed shouted, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Jesus entered Jerusalem and went into the temple courts. He looked around at everything, but since it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. We've listened to Psalm 118, and Psalms 113 to 118 are what are known as the Egyptian Hallel or Egyptian Praise Psalm. Each year they're sung at the Passover festival to praise God for rescuing the people of Israel from slavery in Egypt. The first two psalms would have been sung before the Passover meal and the other four afterwards. It's likely that those psalms would have been the hymns that according to Mark's Gospel, Jesus and his disciples sang as they went out to the Mount of Olives. Psalm 118 opens by summoning different groups of people to give thanks to God, the people of Israel, the priests, and all who believe in God. 
The psalm tells how God rescued the people of Israel and gave them victory over their enemies. It would have been sung by pilgrims as they approached the temple to celebrate the Passover. Open for me the gates of the righteous. I will enter and give thanks to the Lord. When our gospel reading, we find some parallels with this psalm, such as the call to join the festal procession with bows in hand. We tend to picture people waving palm branches as Jesus rides into Jerusalem. But the only mention of this is in John's Gospel. Mark tells us that the people spread their cloaks on the ground, while others spread branches that they had cut from the fields. Jesus' journey into Jerusalem took him through Bethany and then Bethphage, where the disciples found the colt for him to ride. About 20 years ago, I walked this journey in reverse from the Mount of Olives through Bethphage and then into Bethany. It was a dusty, unmade road with a few flat-roofed houses, the type you find in illustrated Bibles. It was one of the few places that I really could imagine having changed very little from when Jesus walked that way. I took this photo of a painting in the church of Bethphage. There you'll see people waving their bark palm branches. I was amused to see a large stone out in the courtyard next to that church, which actually Jesus was meant to have used to mount that cold. Well, I can only say that if, it, if that was true, then that cold must really have been a giant amongst donkeys. It was a huge stone. Of course, you wouldn't normally expect an important person to choose a donkey to ride up into Jerusalem. Certainly not a king. But of course, this king wasn't coming in majesty or returning in triumph from waging a successful war. Rather, he was coming in humility, offering peace and reconciliation. And of course, Zechariah had prophesied that the Messiah would arrive in this way. See, your king comes to you, righteous and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The religious leaders in particular would have understood the implications. Surely Jesus was making it plain for all to see that he was indeed the Messiah, knowing full well what the result of that would be. And as Jesus drew near to Jerusalem, there would have been great excitement in the air, thousands and thousands of pilgrims making their way to Jerusalem to commemorate their ancestors' liberation from slavery in Egypt. But yet again, the people of Israel were subject to the rule of another nation, the powerful empire of Rome. And those would have been turbulent times. As the pilgrims flocked to celebrate at the temple, the Romans would have been on their guard, ready to suppress any sign of rebellion. The Jewish leaders, the chief priests, the scribes and Pharisees were also keen to keep the status quo. They didn't want anything to disturb the fragile peace that they enjoyed with the Roman authorities. The very last thing they wanted was for some supposed Messiah to come and rock their boat. Jesus' teaching, his ministry to the poor, his acceptance of those on the margins of society, flew in the face of all that they taught about God's ways. They regarded Jesus' claims as blasphemous. They refused to believe that they might just be true. And of course, Jesus was accompanied by a large crowd of disciples, not just those 12 that we know by name. They were full of joy and excitement at the miracles Jesus had performed. And they began to praise God, shouting out, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. And although there was much rejoicing, I'm sure many of those people would have been hoping for a king like the warrior kings of old, a leader who would restore their nation to its former glory. But Jesus had come, not to raise up an army to defeat the Romans, not to destroy or condemn, but to bring God's peace, to demonstrate God's love and compassion, to offer reconciliation and forgiveness, not to just one nation, but to all people not to release them from Roman oppression and establish an earthly kingdom, but to usher in God's eternal kingdom. Of course, 
they failed to understand this. And when Jesus didn't meet their expectations, they would quickly turn away from him. Crowds can be very fickle. You only have to watch the reactions of football crowds to see how easily people turn against those who don't live up to their expectations. And of course, there are always some ready to stir up hatred and violence. Think of those protests in Bristol just this last week, or the storming of the state capitol in Washington in January. And it wouldn't be long before the same people who shouted hosannas would be calling for Jesus to be crucified. But maybe we shouldn't be too quick to judge them. This crowd was easily manipulated by those who wielded power and influence. But how many of us can honestly say we'd have behaved differently? That we've never been tempted to follow the crowd? That we've never doubted our faith? It isn't easy to stand your ground when everyone else is moving in the opposite direction. That first Palm Sunday was a day when people believed that something wonderful was going to happen. But it was also the start of a journey that would take Jesus to the cross. On Palm Sunday, Jesus was a hero, but by the end of the week, he'd be treated as a criminal. During this past year, many people will have had their beliefs and certainties shaken to the core. And as we look to the unfolding of the government's roadmap, maybe some of us are inclined to rejoice, but others may struggle to find any sense of joy, knowing that their lives have changed in profound ways, dealing with ongoing grief and suffering. Those celebrations on Palm Sunday would soon be overshadowed by the sombre events of Holy Week. Joy would turn to disillusion and sorrow, yet joy would be restored in the events of Easter Day. And Psalm 118 reminds us of the way God often turns things upside down. The stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. The Lord has done this, and it is marvellous in our eyes. Through his death and resurrection, Jesus, the Messiah rejected by his people, would become the cornerstone of our faith, bringing salvation, shining light into the darkness, opening the gates of God's kingdom to all who will put their trust in him. And as our communities emerge from lockdown, there will be many who have been scarred by the events of the past year. Yet through this year, maybe there are things that we've learned, things to hold on to as we move forward, a greater sense of community, greater connection with our neighbours, a respect for our environment, maybe a greater sense of connectedness with the whole of the human race as we realise that things that happen in one country have great effects on others too. And although our faith may have been shaken, for many of us it's simply our faith that has upheld us and sustained us through these difficult times. During Lent, we've been reflecting on the Live Lent booklet looking at the ways in which we might communicate the good news of God's love to others. And as followers of Christ, this is certainly something that we're all called to do. Next week in our Live Lent booklet, there's a suggestion that we could commit to, to pray regularly for five people who don't know Christ as their Lord, and to look for opportunities to share our story with them. So this Holy Week, as we contemplate Jesus' journey to the cross, may we be challenged to share the good news through what we do, through what we say, maybe through offering a listening ear and allowing others to share their stories with us, to reach out through acts of love and compassion so that others will be drawn to the hope that we have through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour. We now profess our faith in Christ in the words of our creed. Though he was divine, he did not cling to equality with God, but made himself nothing. Taking the form of a slave, he was born in human likeness. He humbled himself and was obedient to death, even the death of the cross. 
Therefore God has raised him on high, and given him the name above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, and every voice proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. As Jesus rides into Jerusalem on a donkey, and the crowds welcome him, we sense both the joy at the Messiah being acclaimed, and the heaviness of his suffering which follows. Jesus' mission is drawing to its fulfilment. As we recall Jesus entering Jerusalem, let us gather our thoughts to pray. Today's congregational response is, you are our God, we welcome you. Father, as the crowds welcome Jesus and sang your praises, we pray that many more will welcome you into their hearts and lives over the coming year. We pray for opportunities to spread your good news and courage to take them. We lift to you our services and events this holy week and next weekend and pray you will draw people to yourself through the prompting of the Holy Spirit. That they may see there is so much more to Easter than a long weekend and chocolate eggs. You are our God. We welcome you. Father, we recall the donkey Jesus rode on and we pray for that real humility in our hearts which treats status and image casually and truth and loving service seriously. You are our God, we welcome you. Father, the children sang and shouted your praise and we pray for the children in our homes, our benefits and our land. May we not fail them in the support and teaching they need. We especially pray for those children who attend our family services, those who attend the Frogs Youth Club. We especially pray for Hannah, our youth enabler, that you will continue to guide and inspire her, and may the funding uncertainties over her future be resolved. You are our God. We welcome you. Father, the crowd were responding to the healing love they'd seen in action in Jesus. We bring to you in our love and imagination now all those we would have brought to Jesus for healing and help. We take a moment's silence to lift those known to us to you and those known only to you. Give them comfort and reassurance, wholeness and hope. You are our God, we welcome you. Father, Jesus knew he was riding to his death. We pray for all on that last journey, especially those burdened with fear and guilt, that they may know the peace and joy that can be had on that journey traveling with you. We take another opportunity to lift any people known to us in this situation. We commend to your eternal love all who have died, thanking you for the blessings we have received and even for the grief which is part of the love we share. You are our God, we welcome you. Father, we too spread our coats on the road as we express our thankfulness 
for all you have done for us and the amazing extent of your love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Trusting in the compassion of God, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Notices for Palm Sunday This Wednesday will be our final midweek reflection in our Lent course, God's Story, Our Story. All week you will be able to listen to The Passion of Christ, reflective readings from Mark's Gospel, along with music. It lasts 45 minutes and is best enjoyed in one sitting. Also all week you can visit our Easter Trail in St Peter's Churchyard which is quite thought-provoking for both adults and children and a good family outing. On Good Friday, there will be outdoor prayers at the cross in each of our churchyards. You will find the times on the screen. And then Easter Sunday, we will have a six o'clock dawn service in Cheswardine Cemetery and then Holy Communions in each of the churches of our benefice. Check the bulletin or website for the times of the service near you. I hope you have a very blessed, reflective Holy Week.
I invite you to join me in this final prayer of commitment. Lord, grant us simplicity of faith and a generosity of service that gives without counting cost, a life overflowing with grace poured out from the one who gave everything that we might show the power of love to a broken world and share the truth from the living word. Lord, grant us simplicity of faith and a yearning to share it. Amen. May we know the love of the Heavenly Father deep in our hearts. May we understand our significance in the centre of his family and the bonds that hold us so close as brother and sister. May we understand the lengths that he was prepared to go for all mankind and freely respond in the today he has given us to cherish. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.